Mr. Klein and this is Mr. Harrison and we are the electricity instructors here at the ACE Center in Highland Springs. Today we are talking with our morning class which is the Electricity One uh, class for the ACE Center and today we're going to go over the GFCI outlets which are ground fault circuit interrupters. So here we go. Okay. Uh, first I want you guys to look at the ground fault that Mr. Harrison is going to pass around for you. When you're looking at these receptacles there's a couple things that I want you guys to see. All right. Uh, the first thing is that the receptacle looks a little bit different. So what are some of the things on this receptacle that looks different than the normal receptacles that we've been talking about until now? It's got buttons on it, okay? What, what do those buttons say? Reset. Test and reset. reset. Good. So when you're drawing a GFCI, okay, we're going to draw it just like it looks. It's going to look like this. It still has the short on the right, the long on the left for the hot and the, and the neutral, short, long, and the ground. Darkened in circles are still on the right because the screws are the hots. The neutral side are on the left. Okay, they're open screws. Now, how did this GFCI works? Is it has a CT inside. A CT stands for current transformer. And what this does is it monitors the current going out on the hot versus the current coming back on the neutral, okay? And if it detects a difference of between four and six milliamps, it's gonna turn itself off. Now, where do you think we would have some of these outlets at? Where have you seen these before? Bathrooms. Bathrooms. Basements. Basements, near your sinks, okay? So what are all of those have in common? Near water, good. All right, the code book also says, the National Electric Code also says that these outlets have to be placed in certain areas, such as basements, outside, okay, um, inside of a kitchen, bathroom, laundry. Laundry facilities have to have GFCIs. Your dishwashers now have to be on GFCI protection. Dishwasher, okay, even though everything's contained, the water's inside that dishwasher, the dishwasher still must be GFCI protected, okay? And so what happened was, a, a long time ago, why did these outlets, how did they came about was a, a gentleman was so distraught that his, his daughter had died that he decided to make this kind of an outlet. And so what it's designed to do now is that little CT, that current transformer that I told you, it monitors the current going out versus the current coming back. If that I have a drill, that on the drill it says it pulls five amps, okay? When I pull the trigger and if I wrap a piece of tape around the trigger to keep it, you know, engaged, that drill is pulling five amps. If I took that drill and threw it into the bathtub with full of water, okay, that electricity is gonna leak out into the water. So that resistance is different. It's changed the whole resistance of everything going on. And when it does that, it's no longer pulling five amps. It might be a little more, a little less because the resistance has changed. So as soon as it does that, it, it detects that there's a difference between four and six milliamps. Milli is very small, remember. And as soon as it detects that four to six milliamps, it shuts itself off. So it's designed to keep your younger brother, your younger sister, somebody from being electrocuted inside the bathtub with a curling iron or whatever else if it falls inside the bathtub, okay, or anywhere near the sink. If you're working near the sink and you got the toaster oven, and you're touching the sink and the toaster. It's designed so that you don't get shocked or electrocuted. Does that make sense? All right. I'm sorry. How many of you guys realize what four to six milliamps really is, as far as a number? Is it a very large number or is it a very small number? Small. It's a very small milli, right? Three places. So it's not even a full amp or one amp. Okay, so it's designed for very little for the right reasons. What I want you guys to do here in a few minutes, we're going to go out to the lab and I want you guys to perfect wiring this. So we're going to teach you how to wire it first and then we're going to go out inside the lab and then you guys are going to work off of this drawing. All right, so the first thing I've drawn is the panel box and I'm going to draw my GFCI, okay? Now this still has a box that it goes into, so the GFCI looks more square, all right? Now on the back of that GFCI, there's a couple things written on it. What do you notice? Line and load, okay? So line, and usually they're on the bottom, but I want you guys to always double check to make sure because some manufacturers put it at the top and some, most of them are at the bottom, but I want you just to, when you're drawing this, to write line and load so that you understand and I see what you 
are doing with this to where we make sure that you're going in the same place with it, okay? So always write line and load. Now line has the word in in it. This is where the power coming in is gonna go, okay? So if I'm bringing in the power from the panel box, I will run two conductors, okay? First one I'm gonna hook up and I draw is what wire? The neutral, good. Neutral is what color? White. white, good. So let's go ahead and hook it up first. Hook it up on the neutral bar. Color is white, purpose is neutral. Now, the thing you need to know about this, there are no tabs inside of this receptacle. It's not like a regular receptacle. There's no tabs inside. So when you come from the power coming in, the neutral has got to go to the neutral side of the line. Does that make sense? You do not go to load side with this because this is the power coming in from the panel. So if it's coming from the panel, it goes to the line side. This will be the neutral. This right here is coming from the breaker. So the color and the purpose, hot. All right, so where is this going to? Where would I take this wire to? To the load or to the line side? Line side and it's going to go to the hot, right, on the line side. That's my power coming in. Now, if the, this were the only receptacle here, then we would be completely finished, all right? You can protect up to six outlets off of this one GFCI. So if I've got another receptacle here that I wanna protect, draw the receptacle in, Short on the right, long on the left, and my ground darkened on the right for hots. Open circles on the left for the neutrals. If I want to protect this, those are my two lines coming from that power to the next receptacle. If I want to protect this outlet, then I need to come off of the load side. Load side is what protects, is what's being protected. Okay, does that make sense? If I don't want this outlet to be protected, then I have to go to the line side. How do I put two wires under one screw? Pigtail, okay? So if I wanna not protect this, then I'm gonna pigtail off of the line side. If I want this protected, then I'm just gonna simply come off of the load side. So neutral, and what side would the neutral go to over here? Left side, does it matter which one? Why not? Because of the tab, good. The tab is in place, and so therefore the power continues to flow. Color is white, purpose is neutral. Okay, good. Now, if I wanna, I still gotta get a hot wire off of this, so where am I gonna come from? I want this protected. Come from the load side, good. Good job, Mr. Washington, so here. And does it matter if I, since I put it on the bottom, does that matter? No. Why not? Because of the tab, good job. So this color, black, purpose, would it be the switch lag? Why not? There's no switch, right, good job. All right, so what I want you guys to do is we're gonna now go into the lab and we're gonna start the second portion of your learning process, which is to actually do this inside of your booth, okay? What I want you guys to do is we're going to use 14-2, okay, so 14-2. Does anybody remember how many amps that 14-2 is good for? Yes, sir. 15. 15, good. So 14-gauge 14, 14 wire is good for 15 amps. Do you all remember what 12-gauge wire was good for? 20. 20. 20, good, because the smaller the number, the larger the wire, okay, and so if it's larger, it's got more uh, properties for ampacity, so you can have a bigger ampacity. So 14.2, and what I want you guys to do is this schematic right here. The GFCI is here. This one, I want protected, okay? So I want this one protected, GFCI protected. GFCI goes on the first box, second one GFCI protected. Now usually these are gonna be at countertop height. I want these to be at regular receptacle height. Okay, so I want them off the floor 18 inches. Okay, 
uh, use those boxes that are at 18 inches and go ahead and wire these two. All right, so we're gonna go ahead and transition to the lab and you guys are gonna do this. If you wanna talk about 210. Okay, guys, in your national, let's go code book, just real quick. Okay, we haven't really introduced the code book to you yet. Okay, it will be coming to you though. It's also part of our program. But in Article 210.8, okay, it's gonna list everywhere you are required to install a DOCI, all right? So, for example, you will do in dwelling units, which is a house, okay? Bathrooms, for sure, right? That's a US base, isn't it? Yeah. Okay, garages or separate buildings. Okay, that's definitely going to give way. Outdoors, so if you have outdoor receptacles, crawl spaces. So what's what's in common with all this? Dampness, right? Water. Okay, you can get down. So, uh, also in your kitchen, it's very important to have them in your kitchen, especially on the countertop. Okay, so think of mostly your wet or damp locations, and that's where they're required to be. All right? All right, cool, get safety glasses, get tooled up, let's go to shop. Good job, man. And then you need one more on that side. When we're doing this, make sure this thing right here looks nice. And like, you don't want the staple inside the radius of the bin. So we'll keep it like that and make this thing right here look nice and neat, okay? Well, what does the code say about stapling? Okay, good, so we put the staples where the code says. Now look, we also, your GFCI is gonna go there, your regular receptacle goes there. Good job, man. Yes, sir. Listen, if you guys, if you guys have your two single pole or single game boxes up top, try to pretend it's a countertop, like in the kitchen. Where they belong. You can go from this box to that box. Okay. Let me check it out. That's right, put the GFCI there, and then the regular one there, okay? You don't have to go here. I ain't gotta put a home run. Just home run here, home run to that. All right. There you go, yep. There you go. Getting it? Yeah. Need some help? No, not right now. Okay. Looks good. Mm -hmm. When you're using the knife, okay, you did really good coming down through here. When you get to like right here though, you don't have to finish that cut. You can open this up like this and then pull, you see what I'm saying, like that, but it and get it out. It, it's okay. It, that's not gonna hurt it, okay? And then take the take the razor knife and just trim all that out, okay? Then when you start the cut here, come back up all the way inside. When you come halfway down through, then I'm gonna stop right here and put my hand above the knife, okay? Because I never wanna cut where my hands are underneath that blade. And I don't have to finish all the way down because now I've got a nice clean opening. I can open that up and then I can cut this, pull this out, and then now you have all of your wires there. Track them in. Good job.
one right here is going from here over to there, I would put this one, since it's going right here, in, I, it, I would put it in this one and move this one to the outside like that. See what I'm saying? Because the next one's going to be right, 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 right. There you go. Sorry about your stable. Put, put that one in there, though, and that's going to hold it, okay? And then cut your other wire and put that one in. And that's going to be good. Nah, Bowler, that looks good, man. We'll move that out of here just for now. All right, so look. All right, so look. Well, what we're going to do is we're just going to do this. This will be the first one, then you cut the next one, okay? That way it's not. Yeah, you got you need two, okay? You cut that one, boom, and then get another one to come up and over into that, okay? And you can go ahead and staple this Jimmy Jank right here to the face, okay? You go ahead and hook that one up. And then you're good. Yes, sir. You need help? Brownies. But you need, yes, but I would run one more and then staple them, okay? Because two wires have to be run. You need your home run and then this, okay? So I would, so run your home run and then staple them together, okay? How long home run be like five? Make it 20. Make it 20? 25, okay? So it would come through there and then come straight down and out. Leave that one in there. I'll put it on All right, don't yell at me. <laughs> like that. All right, yes, sir. And then put the other one in. And then just bring that, leave it out like that, and then nail that one. Okay, that's good. You good, man? You need some help? Uh, yeah. Um, okay. I gotta, I gotta get, I gotta get in front of this box. Right? All right. So look, let's go like this, because we're not gonna use this box. We're gonna use these down here. So let's go ahead and hook this one up first. We'll put it into this one. Okay. And this will be your home run. So this will be the feed. So if this is your feed coming in, is this gonna be line or load? Line. Good. So we'll staple it here, cut it. Then you're gonna run another wire from there up through into that, and that's gonna be the load, okay? And then your GFCI will go here, but you can cut it and staple it right there, okay, for your panel box. Good job, man. Thank you guys for watching. Hope you enjoyed the lesson and enjoy your day.